so hot. Hello everyone and welcome to your destination, Jess. in advance for me looking sweaty or gross today because it is unbelievably, ridiculously, stupidly hot. And yes, I am in a new location. I am back in my home home. Not my coast home that I was at for uni because I have deferred my degree, long story short, and I'm back here and I am happy now. Happier because it's still crap that I've got to think about what I want to do with my future, but I'm here and that's a lot better than worrying about uni and stressing my little head off. Alrighty, so what I'm going to be talking to you about today is products that I regret buying. I only have a few and I mean there's probably more, but I'm, you know, I'm not like the big makeup expert and I am happy with like cheap products because I can't afford to spend money on a lot of things. So what I have mostly is acceptable Probably for most people they'd be like, oh my god, I why did I buy this? Why did you buy this? But I'm okay with it. So I've got some of the stuff down here next to me, which is where I'll be reaching, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six things. Six things, and I'm gonna start oh four, no, six things. I'm gonna be starting with the thing that is the biggest craze, and everyone's gonna be like, how do you regret buying that? And that is a tangle tease. Now I don't have the real brand Tangle Tees, I have one called Tangle Ease by, let's check, by Lady Jane, and before you start saying, well there's your problem, you need to get the real one, no I don't, they're exactly the same, seriously, I've seen them in the shops, they've got the same bristles, this one just has like a little case, and it was like half the price, so yeah, now to me, this just feels like it rips your hair. And yes, it does take your hair out, like it says it doesn't pull your hair out, but it does. And it just doesn't really get the knots out that well. I just find a normal brush so much better. And honestly, this doesn't seem to damage your hair less, so I just will stick with a normal brush. I have kept it, obviously, and I have kept it sometimes to use on wet hair because I guess that's what some of them say it's better for. But yeah, I would prefer to have saved the like $12 or whatever it was. That I spent on it and bought like a shirt or something. <laughs> and the next item is also a fairly popular one and I bought it actually off recommendation from Zoe's video or Zoella and I think maybe even Tanya Bird did it and just people like that and they like swear by it and use it all the time or they used to not so much anymore but that is this sea salt spray and it's the Tony and Guy one so it's actually a really good brand and it was quite expensive from memory. I've had this for a year plus because that's how little I use it. Um, it's called Tony and Guy Casual Limited Edition Sea Salt Texturizing Spray. And it just, honestly, like, I guess at the start it gives you some more texture or like a little bit of crinkly waves. It just to me makes it look A, messy, and B, it makes your hair a literal bird's nest within a few minutes. If you're walking around and your hair's like, just even slightly touching your shirt or whatever or just moving in like the breeze or whatever it just becomes like yeah a literal bird's nest crossed with a ginormous singular dreadlock and it is the worst thing to brush out you have to like rip your hair out almost had to cut it out a few times because I wore it in there for like a whole day and yeah I just I never wear it because I'm too scared and it just makes my hair feel like crap to be honest so maybe it works for you let me know if I'm doing something wrong. I mean, there's not really much you can do wrong. You just spray it on and either blow dry it or air dry it. So, I don't know. But I'm definitely not buying that again. And I'm probably never going to use it again. So I don't even know why I keep it. The next thing was actually a bit of an accident. And that's why I regret buying it. Because I thought it was something else. And it wasn't. And that is this CoverGirl True Blend Foundation. I thought, silly me, in my rush of, oh my god, there's a $3 foundation special on. Was like... Oh my god, this is the L'Oreal True Match or whatever it is that Zoella always talks about. That's amazing, it's like $3, because it kind of looked the same at the time. When I think about it, it probably doesn't, but anyway. And so I was like, quick, get it. And then I got home, and I tried it on, and it is the most oily foundation you can imagine. It's quite good match to my skin colour, like it's a more 
not so orangey pinky base, it's more of like a neutrally base colour, like a, I don't know how to explain it, I'm not good at colour explaining, but um, yeah, and it is so oily, and even the most amount of powder you put on just doesn't cover it, so I've never worn it, as you can see, more than like twice, or sometimes I'll mix it in with another one of my foundations, just to use it up so I don't waste it, but that was my bad, and I'm sure the L'Oreal cover, whatever true match it's called, uh, I'm sure that it is good and this is just not good. Whoops. And the next thing is again another craze trend thing that people rave about and well I actually haven't heard people but the ads make it look amazing and I bought this before the ads and before it was um, like a thing because I just saw it and I was like oh cool it's kind of like um, one Naomi Smart used and it, I think it's a benefit one for you. It, anyway it's an eyebrow thing. And it's called the Maybelline Brow Drama, and it's basically like a eyebrow colored, depending on your eyebrow color, mascara that you rub through your eyebrows. And on the ads, they're like, and then next minute they've got like literally, like basically they've just gone and stuck on some eyebrows. And this is not do that. You can literally maybe tell slightly if you look really close that you've got something on your eyebrows. Again, I might be using it wrong, but I can't see how because you just like brush it on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I use it sometimes mainly more as a setting sort of thing, and it has a bit of colour. But I find that if you put it on once you've put like powder or um, pencil or whatever on underneath, it then goes and rubs that off because it's like liquidy. So I'm not going to buy that again. Probably will use it up just for the sake of it, but. I wouldn't recommend it. And this next thing I have not used in forever and ever and ever because I forgot about it because it was right at the bottom of my makeup stuff because it just really, it doesn't do anything and I can't really figure out the contraption of it to be honest and it is the Astralis Brush On Mineral Illuminator. So it's a powder highlighter and it's got this loose powder stuff in here, I don't know if you can see that in this little compartment bit here and then you pull that off and pull the lid off and it's like one of those retractable brush things so like the brush is fine but then it's like it clicks and I don't know if that opens the powder pathway for it or if it's just broken <laughs> or what I don't know what it does but either way I can't really get anything to come out and it's got this like pump thing that you press and I think it might press the powder or something but I really don't know and I mean I have got some to come out oh like that I don't know if you can see that like puffing out, but point is when you actually put it on then from getting it out finally, it doesn't do anything. It's Or if it does, there might be like one little like glitter clump on your face. It's not really like a nice highlighter. So yeah, give a miss on that one. And last but not least, this is not really a regret as such. It's just something that wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, but I still use it because... I don't know, it's okay, and that is just in general, I'm not talking about the brand, but clear mascara. I got the e.l.f. one, and it's um, lash and brow clear mascara, so you got your eyebrow one on that end, and your eyelash one on that end. And I mean, I, I heard that using clear mascara is like a natural enhancement to your eyelashes, as opposed to full on mascara that makes it look really obvious that you have something on. But to be honest, it just um, doesn't really do much at all, to be fair. And I don't know about you guys, but you know how the tips of your eyelashes sometimes go lighter than the bottom? So when you put normal mascara on, it enhances it by making the tips black. So it is your natural length, but it looks normal. I mean, it looks longer to what you would normally have it because you usually can't see the lighter tips at the end. Whereas this makes the light tips more obvious. So it makes it look like you've got white tips on your eyelashes almost. I don't know how to explain it, but... It's okay and I do use it often because I guess it does give a little bit of difference. So if I really, really am unimpressed with my eyelashes one day and I don't want to put mascara on, like proper mascara, then I'll use this. And the eyebrow one will be good for setting your eyebrows. I just haven't used that yet because I have another one that's like on its own. So yeah, I mean, try it. Maybe it's what you expected, but it certainly wasn't what I expected. Radio, that is it. That is all the products or all the ones that I can think of off the top. Oh wait, no it's not. I've got one more. That's right. Okay, so one more product. 
that I regret buying and I don't have it here with me that's why I forgot because I gave it to my mum in the end because it just I didn't use it and she sort of liked it more than I did and that is the Sally Hansen um, gel shellac pairings so I can't show you but you get like um, whatever colour you want they have a few colours and then this gel top coat and it's meant to set the nail polish to make it like you've had shellac put on at the salon or gel nail polish and it's meant to last for like two weeks without chipping and I kid you not I put it on at one night so it hasn't been damaged overnight get up in the morning like brush my teeth do whatever and by the time it's like nine o'clock in the morning there's chips everywhere that's not seven days that's like a few hours so and it wasn't just me being rough because when I have nail polish on I'm very very careful with everything and I like touch things awkwardly because I don't want to chip it because I chip very easily with nail polish um, so yeah it just didn't last at all and I was like really excited for it because it was a color that I absolutely love and have been looking for for ages it was like the one that I showed in my favorites maybe but it was more of like a creamy beige color not so gray brown and I was just so so disappointed because I was like wow a nail polish that's finally going to stay on my fingers in the perfect color and it wasn't too expensive considering it was like a, a Sally Hansen brand for starters a proper gel top coat and it was like in a pair so you paid less because it was like a package thing so that was disappointing but anyway that is all this time for the things that I regret buying and I will not be buying them again ever unless somehow they change them and make them better but thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know if I'm using them wrong or how to make them better maybe there's like little hacks or something um, please let me know anything that you regret buying so I can steer clear of it or maybe things that you have been loving or maybe if you have been loving the ones that I showed because you can we all have our own opinions and that's a good thing. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for 11 subscribers now, that's really cool. I was like, I'm never going to get over like 4 because why would you want to watch me? But 11, that's awesome. So thank you so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!